material most widely used, both in the past and in the present, for the construction of boats and small vessels is wood. In the region of the Mediterranean, where the navies of Western civilizations had their beginnings, the Lebanon cedar was considered the ideal wood for the boat builder's needs. From this durable and resilient wood came the planking, the masts and spars, and the ribs of the early sailing vessels. So extensively has this wood been used over the centuries that today there remain only about 300 trees scattered in small groves over the hills of Lebanon. From primitive times, the boat builder found that the roots or knees of this durable wood afforded maximum strength for the structural members. With a minimum of shaping, he could produce frames whose strength lay in the natural curve of the wood. As the supply of this valuable wood diminished, and as the art of boat building developed, the builders were forced to find other woods to take the place of the once common cedar and to devise a method of simulating the natural curve of the knees. In North America, white oak, because of its structural superiority and durability, is the most important wood for bending purposes. Today, white oak timbers, steamed and bent to the desired curve, fill the needs of America's many boat yards. So heavy are the demands of boat builders that now the supply of white oak is in danger of ultimate extinction. The Navy has listed specifications for the requisitioning of stock, and stock which does not measure up to these specifications must be rejected. Stock showing signs of shake and excessive checking has been automatically rejected. Rot and insect or worm holes are other defects which render wood unfit for bending purposes. A sample of the stock which does meet all Navy requirements is tested by the Navy prior to consummation of the purchase contract. This stock adequately fulfills the purpose for which it was requisitioned. The inspector in the field and the testing laboratory work toward the purchase of perfect bending stock. But in spite of the caution observed in the purchase of wood, a common loss occurs in the actual bending process. Improper selection from the stockpile faulty bending techniques and carelessness account for a loss through splits, breaks, and buckling, which mounts as high as 60% in some boat yards. In this film, we will show the techniques and procedures employed at Norfolk Naval Shipyard. In this boat shop, loss during the bending process has been reduced to 7%, thanks to the careful selection preparation and handling of stock from the moment it arrives in the yard until its incorporation in the finished boat. After it has arrived in the yard, bending oak is stockpiled in an open shed to ensure adequate ventilation, but roofed to prevent direct contact with rain and sunshine. If the stock has not been end coated prior to shipment, it should be treated on its arrival at the yard. This will prevent any further deterioration in the wood while in storage. In selecting a blank from the stockpile, consideration must be given to the job at hand. For an acute curve, 
the straightest grain should be used, with a maximum slope of 1 inch to 15 inches in length. The ends of the selected stock are squared up, and a piece is cut to the desired length to facilitate the bending operation. At Norfolk Naval Shipyard, the billet is bent rough, so that any minor defects encountered in the bending operation, such as cracks or buckling, can be eliminated in the trimming. The billet is tapered from four inches at the heel to two and one half inches at the head. Before the wood is inserted in the steam box, it should be tested for moisture content. An electric moisture meter will enable you to determine the content of your stock. A 25 to 35 percent moisture content will ensure ease of operation and best results, though stock with a lesser content can be bent if it is left longer in the steam box. If the wood has a greater moisture content, Special care must be taken in the bending operation. The billets are steamed at atmospheric pressure with wet steam. High pressure dry steam should be avoided. A good rule to follow is one hour for each inch of thickness, or approximately four hours for the average four inch billet. Both moisture and steam are important to the preparation of a bending oak billet. While the billets are being steamed, the bending table is set up. The table itself is a slab of cast iron checkered with square holes. The pattern of the frame to be bent is laid out on the bending slab and the bending mold is set up to conform to it. The mold is built up of shaped metal blocks set on the bending slab. The mold should be laid out on a slightly more acute curve than that indicated on the pattern, as the bent and cured billet will spring slightly when the spall is removed. The blocks are held in place by dogs or pawls set in the square holes. They are tightened with wedges and the mold is finished with a metal band. A steel back band, three-eighths of an inch thick and six inches wide, is bolted to the end pressure head. To the shackle on the end pressure head is attached a block and fall. The other end is attached to a bridle, which is fastened permanently to the framework of the machine. The end of the line is passed around an idling drum and over the winch head of an air-operated windlass. The windlass is operated by a standard heavy-duty air motor, which has been found equal to any bending operation undertaken at the boat shop. When the billet has been properly steamed, it is removed from the steam box. The wood should be bent as soon as possible after its removal from the steam box to minimize the loss of heat and moisture. A tension strap of galvanized sheet iron is applied immediately to the rind side of the billet, which can be determined by examination of the sawn ends. The grain of the wood curves away from the rind and toward the heart of the tree. Note that the tension strap is nailed only at the ends of the billet with tenpenny galvanized nails. The billet is now inserted in the bending machine with the tension strap next to the back band and with the heel or broad end of the billet 
next to the end pressure head of the bending apparatus. The screw of the end pressure head is tightened until the steel back band is pulled taut. The billet is now ready for bending. The winch is started and the billet is slowly brought around the mold. The operator of the windlass and the man in charge of the end pressure screw must coordinate their efforts in order to maintain a constant pressure on the billet while it is being pulled around the mold. The operator must regulate the end pressure screw in order to prevent either buckling on the inside edge or splitting on the rind side of the billet. End pressure must be varied also according to the grain of the billet to be bent. Familiarity with the bending operation will enable the operator of the end pressure screw to gauge the correct tension and speed of bending for each individual billet. As the billet is bent, dogs are set into the bending slab behind the back band to control the form of the mold and to provide a safety factor in case the tackle should give way. When the billet has been pulled up, Wedges are used to force it snug against the mold. The pattern is then laid across it to check the curve. A spall is nailed across the curve immediately and the billet is allowed to remain in the mold about 20 minutes or until it has cooled. Then the tackle is released and the bent billet is removed. The machine and the bending mold can now be reset for the next bending operation. The billets are cured for from 30 to 45 days in the open air. A reasonable amount of surface checking may be expected, but this will be eliminated in the trimming. When the bent billet has been cured, the spall is removed and the billet is examined for any defects which may have appeared in the curing. The pattern is then laid on the billet. Careful placement of the pattern makes it possible to eliminate any minor surface defects which may be encountered during the bending operation or during the curing period. Note how the slight buckling will be sawn away. And so a length of wood is transformed from a blank into a frame, ready for incorporation into a boat. No single factor is responsible for these perfect members, but every factor must be considered. The wood is your responsibility from the moment it enters your yard until the job is completed. The various phases of the operation which must be stressed are as follows. Selection of wood. The blank must be straight grained, free from excessive checking or other defects, and have a reasonable moisture content. Cutting and shaping the blank. The blank must be squared at the ends, cut to the desired length, and tapered from four inches at the heel to two and one half inches at the head. Steaming time. Billets should be steamed at atmospheric pressure for one hour for every inch of thickness, or four hours for the average billet. High pressure dry steam must be avoided, and so should overcooking, as too much steam will cause the wood to break in bending. Application of the tension strap, which must be applied to the rind side of the billet and attached only at the ends. Pressure while bending. Regulate the pressure of the end pressure screw according to the individual billet and decrease the pressure as the billet is bent around the mold. The spall. After wedging up, the spall is nailed on and the billet is left in the bending machine for 20 minutes.
the small remains on the billet during the curing period. Curing of bent billets. Billets must be thoroughly cured for from 30 to 45 days in the open air. Maximum utilization of materials will ensure conservation of our oak supply and sound bending techniques will ensure a bent oak frame durable and resilient, one of the most vital members of a sound craft.